Hi guys, how you doing? So today we're going to take a look at the Razer Tomahawk Mini ITX case. It's one which I've had my arm for a little while, but the £160 that it costs in the UK has been a little bit off-putting, to be perfectly honest. Now, there are a lot of cases around uh, that sort of price that are better, certainly had better reviews. I found it on eBay um, for a bargain price. I picked it up and, you know, I'm actually quite impressed with it. Now, it's far from perfect, but it certainly isn't a bad case. And what we're going to do is take a look at the case in a little bit more detail. Um, we're going to do a build and then I'll come back, talk about the case in six different categories, rate it out of five stars, and then you can get an idea if it's a case for you. Let's do it.
Guys, what we're gonna do now is have a look at the case in six different categories. Um, just to make you aware, there is, they're digging up the road outside. So if you can hear it, apologize. I'm gonna try and disguise it in, in editing as, as much as I can, um, but we're gonna crack on. So from a build quality point of view, the case is fantastic. You know, It's based on the T150 from Lian Lee, Lee, and obviously they make this case. It's solid, it's rugged, the panels are really nice. It's got really good temper glass. And you know, I haven't really got a lot of bad things to say it from a build quality point of view. Um, so basically, for that reason, I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. So when it comes to design, it's a little bit of a Marmite case. Now, the thing I don't understand is timber glass on the rear. What is the point of that? You know, quite a few cases have it nowadays and it's just, just a waste to be perfectly honest. The power supply position, again, I don't get that. You know, I think they should turn it 90 degrees. It may have made it kind of a little bit easier for cable management, who knows. The front where it's got the uh, hub for the RGB, you know, they could have made space like they have in the NR200P for a couple of um, SSDs, that have been really nice. But you know, again, they haven't done that. The SSDs basically are on the bottom, you get two there, but if you do, there's no fans, otherwise it's one SSD at the back. It's not really enough, you know, obviously there's high capacity drivers, but they're expensive and it's just, yeah, a little bit lacking really. I'm not, I haven't really got too many complaints and obviously you've got the RGB if you're into that. However, it does take up a USB port, which you probably haven't got with a mini ITX case. And if you've got a, um, a, an AIO like I have, you have to make a compromise. But you know, overall, it's, it's good. Um, I'm gonna give it three and a half stars because it could have been so much better. So when it comes to cordless support, I think the case is really good. Now, it is a little bit larger than a standard mini ITX case. If you're gonna go for an air cooler, you can get 165 millimeter and AIO up to 240. That's what I did, a couple of fans, one in the front, one in the rear, and overall temperatures were really good. So we ran Cinebench 23 for 20 minutes, and then I gamed for almost an hour. I'm on Battlefield 5. I was really happy with the temperatures. You know, if my car was smaller, I might put a couple of fans in the bottom, that would definitely help. But overall, I'm really impressed. I'm gonna give it four stars. So the GPU support is actually really good. So it's triple slot. Um, obviously, you know, you can't get any kind of fans underneath it. You know, if you've got dual slot, you, you should be able to get some fans under there. Um, for me, I was struggling. For the Win3 3070 Ti, you know, it's kind of, it's a big card, you know. But overall, the temperatures are really good, as we saw with the cooler support. Um, the front fan definitely helps things. I did actually have to remove that or not have it in place um, when I put the GPU in because the angles are a little bit against you. Um, you know, 320 mils is what they say in the manual. However, if you're kind of creative, you can probably stretch that to 330 if you've got big cards. You might need to take the power supply out first. And, but otherwise, you know, from a support point of view, I think I'm gonna give it four stars because it's, uh, it's pretty good. So the area where this case really struggles is cable management. Now, the position of the PSU, as I mentioned earlier on, doesn't help it. The lack of room at the back doesn't help. The temper glass doesn't help. The fact that the door is magnetized so it can kind of open easily doesn't help. If you've got an SFX L power supply, you're gonna have a harder time than an SFX. There is a little bit of room um, with an SFX. As I found, I can bunch cables and, and be a little bit neater. I spent an hour on, on doing this and I was happy with the job. I was able to close the door without it popping open, but you're gonna have to bring your A game when it comes to cable management. It's not great. Um, I'm gonna give it two and a half stars because it's just so bad. So the last category we're gonna look at is value. Now this retails for 160 pounds in the UK and that is just, just extortionate. Now I know obviously ITX cases um, carry a premium and Razer products carry a premium, but to be hit twice, that's not funny. And especially when it's built on the TE150, which is less than a hundred pound case, it's a bit of a kind of a, a kick in the balls to be perfectly honest. Now it's got a lot going for it and it's got a lot of kind of things to kind of do better. The cable management's terrible, the kind of the lack of um, SSD support and just generally the mehness of it, I suppose. It's very difficult to justify buying it at full retail. Now, I picked it up for less than half retail and I'm really happy with the purchase. You know, it's a nice case, I do like it, and it's got a lot going for it, it really has, but not at 160 pounds. There are so many different options out there you can go for, um, and you know, what is the unique selling feature of it? There isn't one really unless you want to raise a logo, which you can't turn off. 
and it takes up a USB port and yeah um, the RGB strips at the bottom they're okay um, but it's not really for me to be perfectly honest you know you know if you're a fanboy of Razer then you might be like yeah I'm all over it but overall I think it's a, a very average case at a very premium price so so for that reason I couldn't recommend it at full retail but if you're going to get it like I said 60 70 80 quid second hand go for it uh, it's a nice case it's got a lot going for it and uh, you may be happy Guys, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.